Hey guys, today I'm gonna to talk to you about a product that I uh, reached out and got on the market. It is a Blink key box. Essentially, it is an output expander via CAN. Uh, it does require setup and configuration, which will make it a little challenging for those that don't understand CAN. Um, I'm gonna be offering them available on the market to already programmed and set up for various systems. Um, so I'm gonna have that uh, capable here soon. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about this. Essentially, it is 11, 10 amp outputs. Uh, it's uh, it's got a Radsock connector on it as well. It's um, IP67 rated. It's 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 really a solid slave device, as I would like to call it, that can work uh, on many systems uh, for dashes and, and additional and you know in addition to a PDM uh, if you needed some extra outputs. Um, the price is pretty competitive comparatively speaking. It doesn't have current monitoring. Uh, capabilities so you don't know how much current you're using on each output it'll tell you when your fuses are blown so there's that and um, outside of that it's just realistically it's an output expander and we're going to talk about it in this video so i'll start with the case and the information supplied by the case first we have our can open slave uh, module the software version is 1.19 uh, it is a 12 volt version they do have a 24 volt version if you are dealing with industrial controls uh, supply voltage is 9 to 16 volts that it operates at. Standby current's net less than 30 milliamps. Your contact uh, amperage is capable of 10 amps on 11 of the 13 channels. It does not have a termination resistor mounted. And it is a uh, negative 40, 85 degrees Celsius, as well as IP rating of IP67. I've already pulled the header off of the Kinch case. There is two tabs on each side one and two and then if we look closely i might be able to get them pictured three and four i've already removed those so i can make this video a little bit easier to see and then we see our insides the red fuses are your 11 10 amp high side outputs we do have two two amp low side outputs that are uh driven by mosfets that could be pwm'd although the pwming capabilities are a little bit more challenging uh, to it, I, I'm not going to go into discussion about the PWM options for sending messages via CAN open to do that. Uh, it's a little bit outside the scope of this video, but it is capable of doing that if you need it. Um, and then if you need to replace a fuse, by any means you can just pull a fuse out, put a new fuse in, you're good to go. Slide it into the box, seal her up. It is, it is a tight fit. Very tight fit. You'll hear the two tabs and you're good to go. Outside we have a Radsock connector as well as our Kinch 18 uh, pin connection, which we will be populating and doing some testing. So I have my setup completed for display purposes. I have the key box here on the right. It's being controlled, it's a slave device. It's being controlled by a EC Master PMU 16 that is not in the picture. Uh, I have a keypad here that is also attached to the ECU Master PMU. And then I have my display here that has a few LEDs and a couple fans, much like you would use on a car. Uh, the output message is one message that I need for the output states, and then one message I need for watchdogs. And I'll explain why we use a watchdog in just a few it's to prevent any issues from occurring if you were to pull this device off the can bus um, so if if you per se had power to a fuel pump right i don't want the fuel pump to run if it's not being stated hey power the fuel pump if you're not getting that message i don't want the scope of operation to work the network is critical to this operation of this now with that being said, I could program the key box here to not look for what's called a heartbeat message. In that case, if we powered on, a me if we sent a message to power on all the devices, then we disconnected the device from the CAN bus network, those devices will run in entirety until we power off that box. It's one of those catch-22 situations. Uh, my my argument is if you don't have the CAN bus connected appropriately and you're having issues, that is something you need to solve prior to the scope of operation. So on our keypad, we just have each individual output, you know, output 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. There is an 11th one, I'm not using it, and then outputs 12 and 13 get a little tricky. 
Uh, they are a different, they require a different message and I'm not gonna go into depth on those. They're uh, low side PWM three amp outputs. Each individual output can control a 10 amp circuit with this box. So it is capable of doing a, you know, your, your typical lights, nothing crazy. It's not gonna do any high, high amperage fans or motors. Um, and potentially high beams and you know even low beams if you're getting down to it and trying to run them on both on one uh, one fuse. So essentially, I'll hit the keypad one. We'll have our left headlamp, our low beam, and then we have a right low beam, high beam left. I'm looking in high beam right, turn signal left, turn signal right, fog lamp left, fog lamp right. I'm gonna go ahead and turn all of those off so we can get back to the brightness. And you can see the, the fan starting on the left and the fan starting on the right. The math to make all this work is kind of fun, funky a little bit, but essentially in, in the messages, you have the off states in two bytes to turn it off. So if you send a message of one in these two bytes, it'll turn off the respected output. And then below it, you'll have the turn on state, which is also a one. So how do we make this work? Essentially, if off equals one and on equals one for the message output for each bit, we can utilize the math functionality associated in ECU master to do so. And essentially for each bit, I have to multiply it by a factor of two. So you're gonna have your first value if off will be essentially, if I want it to be zero for off and on and one for on, which makes sense, I'll multiply the variable by negative one and then add one to it. And then for the next output, next bit over, I'll have to multiply it by negative two and then add two to it. And then on just equals the variable and you'll just have to multiply it by how far over it shifts. Uh, it's nothing too complicated. If you understand bitwise operations, essentially this is an exclusive or scenario for the off state and, and that's how it works. So there we have it. 11 10 amp outputs, slave device controlled by some device via CAN that would be the master device. And uh, that's about it. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a really solid option. Um, it's, it, it's priced to where it's not in the expensive range. Um, so it's, it's if you're thinking about, you know, if you need a few extra outputs and you just need to control them via a dash or some sort, really, really, really solid option there. Anyways, if you uh, found this video informant, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.